Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Derek Slapp, and um, state representative for uh, West Hartford, Avon, and uh, Farmington. And uh, thanks for joining me for the November edition of Derek and the District. Um, and a, uh, a great kind of exciting show uh, this month. Uh, we're just going to focus on two topics. And the first one is um, save our water and uh, conservation efforts, transparency efforts regarding the MDC, and how we can really all work together to protect this vital resource source our water. So we'll talk about that for about the first 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll take a quick break and then we have on uh, Stephanie uh, Blosey and Stephanie is the owner, uh, her and her sister, of uh, Fleet Feet Sports in uh, West Hartford Center and they do a tremendous amount of great work for our community. Lots of uh, philanthropic efforts and I think once you hear about them you may decide um, you know what that you want to get involved and help out as well. So uh, we'll detail that. Uh, that's in about 15-20 minutes uh, from now. So so that's uh, the rundown of the show, but we begin uh, with Judy Allen, and Judy uh, is a West Hartford resident, and Judy is um, with the organization uh, Save Our Water. And Judy, thanks so much for coming on sure, and spending some time with me. Yeah, I like it. Well, thank you. Um, so why don't we begin with just talking about what is this organization Save Our Water? I mean, people who drive around town uh, in Bloomfield or West Hartford probably have seen some of the signs. Um, you've been in the press and in, in, uh, in newspaper articles but what what is the organization all about we got our beginning um, when the Niagara bottling plant um, went into Bloomfield um, it was a surprise to people that there was established a uh, Niagara bottling plant right mm -hmm. there in Bloomfield because the public hadn't been aware of it no one had been informed um, and it was a complete deal done before anybody knew about it and part of that deal was to provide discounted water um, to Niagara. Um, and so when the deal went through, Niagara was getting up to 1.8 million gallons of water a day of our drinking water, the MDC drinking water. Um, they were getting it at a discount. They could take that water even in times of a drought. Right and it was being bottled and shipped out of state for corporate profits. And you also had, correct me if I'm wrong, but Save Our Water had a lot of concerns about um, the process as well, right? The process of bottling? Uh, well, or, not so much the process but the, uh, of bottling, uh, but the process of how um, this bottled water um, company came into uh, yes. uh, so the, the community. Yes, negotiations um, for the bottling plant were happening between the town of Bloomfield and the MDC for several years before it actually was uh, um, established in Bloomfield. And that process uh, was secret from the public. Even town officials didn't know that the Niagara plant was going in and partly that was because they didn't use their name Niagara. They used a, a development person's name in all the filings that they did with the town. So there were no public hearings, no information, um, and it wasn't until people read about it in the newspaper that they even knew that it was coming to town. Right, I think very clearly, I mean, there, and this cu cuts across party lines, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican uh, or unaffiliated, whatever, there are a lot of folks who really uh, had a concern about some bottled water and just, you know, that, um, that is that a smart use of <clears throat> our resources? And then there's others who had a concern about process. And then there are many who have a concern about both, right? right? <laughs> and uh, so Save Our Water has kind of brought all these people together. And I will tell you, as a freshman legislator, um, I've learned a lot from Save Our Water, uh, not only about the issues that we just spoke about, um, but also really the power of community organizing yeah. right? and about citizen activists. Um, and, and I think Save Our Water is responsible for, you know, there was some legislation that was passed um, this previous session um, and uh, it established an independent consumer advocate um, who's going to um, really kind of help oversee uh, the MDC and make sure we hope that it acts uh, transparently uh, and there's a lot of accountability yeah. at stake. Mm -hmm. And this person will be um, will not report to the MDC, which I think is very important. So truly will be independent. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit about what you know your hopes for this position and what you think it will accomplish? Yes, um, I actually attend a lot of the MDC meetings just because of the transparency issue. There is no one right now 
that advocates for the consumer. All other water companies in Connecticut have a consumer advocate. And the MDC has been very non-transparent, as the Niagara bottling plant shows. And this advocate will have access to all information, can attend all meetings, and will be able to do two things. Um, take the concerns of the customer, the consumer, and express those. That person will be mm -hmm. able to express those back to the MDC. And that person will also be able to be listening for things that might be of interest to consumers and that relaying them back. Right. Um, the consumer will have scheduled meeting times and the availability for people to actually ac access this person directly. Right now, there isn't even a phone number for a consumer to call, except if they have a billing question. About anything else, there isn't even a phone number to call. So the advocate will have a phone number <laughs> That's right. and a way to communicate. That's right. right. And I think this is really textbook in terms of how to pass legislation. Because, um, like I said, great citizen activist group, Save Our Water, working with legislators, uh, myself, Representative Barham uh, from Bloomfield, um, and State Senator Beth Bayh, of course, yep. from West Hartford, who has been just an absolute champion on these issues. Um, and then working across party lines as well. So we were able to get a bipartisan coalition, and we passed it. It was actually the first public act passed in the 2017. Unanimously. Unanimously, both chambers and the very first bill signed uh, into law. So we, we could probably all take some lessons from that and apply it to the budget too, right? How we really need to make compromises and work together. Um, one other part of that bill uh, that I do just want to mention is that it gets rid of reserve payments. So that cost the town of West Hartford $2 million and property taxes $2 million. And essentially, if one town, member town, right in the MDC can't pay its bill under the old law, all the other towns would have to chip in. And now that doesn't exist anymore. Right. Um, so in, in, let's say if Hartford went uh, bankrupt, you know, and, and couldn't pay its bill, the state would uh, not send aid to Hartford in the amount that it owed the MDC, right? right? So uh, local taxpayers would not be on the hook. Right. So another another good part of it. Um, but going beyond what's what was passed, so we got a great win and all worked together on that. Awesome. Can I? But I want to say something about that before you get yes. to that. Part of why we were so successful in the very beginning is because people were really outraged yep. and were quickly able to um, gather people together and show up at the legislature in numbers. And people were pretty surprised that this community group could make such a difference that when we were there each day wearing our blue buttons, That's right. people started to notice and people started to listen. And I think it was our anger and our presence that really made a difference. I think you're right. And speaking from, you know, the. Uh, uh, legislator's perspective, I can tell you it really does make a difference. And I sit on the Environment Committee as well, so yes. it's something that's very <clears throat> important to me. Um, and asked, I may have been the only member ever right, of the General Assembly to request to be on uh, the P&D Committee, which <laughs> is Planning and Development, but uh, Senator Bai and I both did that for a reason, because it has cognizance over uh, the MDC. So we knew going in this session, going to be a big issue. And we want to put ourselves in position. Yes. Um, and like I said, in large part, that's because of, of Save Our Water and your influence. Um, so it's great to celebrate the wins, but we have more work to do. Yes. Right? And uh, why don't you talk just briefly about some of the priorities for Save Our Water going into the next session? Yeah. We um, are extremely concerned about drought and that when we are in a drought, that water bottling companies should have to conserve water in the same way that a resident is asked to serve, ser, conserve water. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, they don't have to do that. We're concerned that there's no regulation over this industry. Um, there is nothing looking at their practices and looking at the water that they're using uh, and just overseeing what happens there. and. Um, no permitting process, no process where they have to submit information about what they're doing and no oversight of that, no permitting that would be um, renewed on a, on a certain period of time so that there's something watching out over this industry. Um, we also work towards no discounts for mm -hmm. water bottles, right. large the water bottles. Bulk rate discount is, is bulk, the term, yep. right? Yep. 
Well, yeah, it's a discount for large volume users. Yeah. And not only is it a discount on water, it's also a discount on sewers and yeah. the Clean Water Project. And that's another piece that we are um, really um, trying to address is that that Clean Water Project charge needs to be fair and equitable across all of the MDC's customers. Right, and that would help lower um, residential rates, right? If yes. it was if it was <coughs> leveled out. Yeah. Um, one thing that folks on, let's say, the other side of um, this debate uh, would argue, and I've heard this, um, they'd say, look, when we're out of a drought, um, MDC has plenty of water, and by getting these bottled water companies to come in, right, and offering uh, the bulk discount because they're competing, right, in a, you know, competitive marketplace. It'll help lower rates because we're selling water, so it'll help lower rates for everyone else. That, that's their argument. Right. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's short-sighted. Um, conditions are going to change. Um, climate change makes a huge difference on our water supply. This is, Connecticut's water is probably its most important precious resource. We cannot afford to squander it um, in a bottling plant that's going to sell it for profits. A, a water bottling plant does not really manufacture anything. Um, it's highly mechanized. It uses very few people in order to run mm -hmm. the machinery. And so the argument is that that's not the way to, to sell more water is to sell it to an industry that basically just is going to sell it for profit somewhere else. Um, so you're saying it's not worth it, right? It's you not know? worth it yep. for our resources. And things are going to change in right. the future. And right now, there is no oversight of this industry at all. Yep. So we've committed to giving them that water despite what may be happening drought-wise or whatever in the future. Right, and, and I do think, you know, you mentioned uh, about drought, and uh, <coughs> that is an issue, I think, and from what I hear from constituents, that really rankles folks when they're asked to conserve, but there's millions of gallons of water right, being taken out and then put in bottles and exported. And, they and say, they're well, not wait required a to conserve it at all. Right, so I, you know, I, I, I hear, yeah, from constituents a lot about that. I do want to make sure we have time to talk about the state water plan. Yes. Um, and I know, you know, some people at, at home who are watching this uh, may think, oh, this sounds really complicated <laughs> and a lot of bureaucratic mess. But tell us why it's important. The state water plan is important because across Connecticut, there are places that have abundant water and there are places that don't, that really struggle for water for several reasons, because of its availability, because of its quality, um, and drinking water is a real issue for many across the straight state. So the state water plan is looking at that as a whole, kind of looking at what is the status of our water. And it was charged with balancing three things, public health or yeah. human consumption, economic uh, growth within the state, right. um, and environmental health. And the idea is to balance all three. So the state water plan right now is in its draft form, which means that there's opportunity for public comments yet before the final draft right. is done. Um, and that, so th on their website, uh, you can go to the Water Planning Council's website. Okay. Um, there's an opportunity to read parts of the plan, to find out when the public hearings are, and to make comments. Great. So um, you can, again, go to that website. You can go to my website, too, if you uh, go to State Representative Derek Slap, and I'll have that information on Good. there as well. And I'm sure you can go to Save Our Water's website, too, right? And there's, yes. so there's lots of ways, easy ways to, um, to make sure that your voice is heard. Yes. Um, so, Judy, I want to thank you again for spending uh, time, um, you know, with me and helping to uh, continue to educate all of us about the importance of our water and look forward to working with you again and all the folks at Save Our Water next legislative great. session. Thank you. You've been a great help to us. Well, thank you very much, Judy. We're going to take uh, a break and we'll be right back with uh, Stephanie from Fleet Feet Sports.
All right, welcome back. And this is a segment uh, that we call Slap Salutes. And uh, the idea is uh, to really highlight, whether it be a business or uh, folks or a nonprofit, um, in West Hartford, they're really going above and beyond making uh, very valuable contributions to our community. And so uh, joining me uh, today is Stephanie Blosey. And Stephanie is the owner of Fleet Feet Sports in West Hartford Center. And you've probably, if you know, you spend any time in West Hartford <laughs> Center, you know exactly where it is, right? It's right by uh, what Luna's Pizza is. Luna Pizza and SK Lavery Appliances. Exactly. So some great local businesses as well. So first, you know, thank you for coming on. Hey, and spending... Thanks for inviting me. Of course. It's exciting. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I mean, I have a personal connection with your business because you've saved my feet and allowed mm -hmm. my wife and I to run all over West Hartford. That's uh, so, awesome. So thank you. You're welcome. Um, but that's not, of course, the only reason that uh, I asked you to uh, come on here um, you know and again you, you really have established I think in a short time a fantastic reputation for uh, for reaching out and helping disadvantaged folks and uh, really having a, a, a philanthropic uh, spirit so can you talk a little bit about kind of where that comes from before we sure. get into some of the specifics so in my previous life I was a meteorologist yep. um, and was really happy working at a company called Weatherbug um, but I got diagnosed with lupus and this was back in the 90s when the doctors said, don't exercise, you need to rest, just stay home. And I was a big runner at the time. I loved playing soccer. And it was really hard for me to like sit and sure. just not feel good all the time. Um, a couple years later, my sister said that she was doing some research. And she found that doctors were saying, if you have cancer or autoimmune diseases, that a little bit of activity was good for you, that it could actually spur the immune system to make you feel better. Um, and she's like, you want to train for a marathon with me? Wow. And I was like, that was a, a dream that I'd always had. My dad's a runner. My brother and my sister yep. had all run marathons with my dad. And, and I wanted to, too. So she trained me um, over the course of a summer. And we ran the Marine Corps Marathon. And I get to finish with my dad and my sister. And it was amazing. Yeah. And at that time, I saw all my numbers and uh, blood work get a lot better. Really? And the doctors were like, oh, you know, what medications are you taking? And I'm like, I'm just running. Wow. Um, so it kind of changed my life it gave me sort of a whole new lease on life and I decided that I wanted to share that with other people um, and my sister was like all right I'll go into business with you what do you want to do yeah. and I was like let's let's own a running store because we could make it a place that we could affect people positively um, and teach them what the power of running or walking or just leading a fit life is uh, so in 2008 uh, we purchased Fleet Feet Sports from yeah. a lady named Alice Gold who had had it for 11 years. Okay. Um, she retired and we, we took it over and it's been amazing. Um, everyone thinks that Fleet Feet is a, you know, a really tough running store. Right. Um, right. But when you come in, like I pride ourselves on we're very friendly, very open. We probably help more non-runners than we do runners. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to say that the secret to a happy life is to have feet that don't hurt. <laughs> right, that's and, pretty uh, basic, but exactly, makes a lot of sense. Exactly, exactly, yeah. so if your feet hurt, you're just like, you're not going anywhere. Um, and I like to say the motto of our store is that we're not just a running store, we're a starting line. So we're your starting line to whether you want to start a walking program, you want to run a marathon, you just want to be happy, healthy. Yeah. We, you know, help a lot of our UPS drivers and postal service workers that are on their feet all day long. Like, we've got little uh, things for their shoes that can help them feel more comfortable. So, you know, if you can, like, go back to, I mean, your story is really inspirational. Um, and when they, uh, when you were first approached by your sister, right, about running a marathon, yeah. what was your reaction? I was like, I really, really want to do this but I probably can't, like I'm too sick to do this. Right. Um, and it was a really long, like, you know, I had, before I was diagnosed with lupus, I was running five, six miles a day. Mm -hmm. And I had to go back and our first run, we went a mile. And wow. it was just like, it, I struggled to finish that mile and we kind of live on a little hill and it was tough. And the next week we went two miles and then three miles. Yep. And then we had a whole training program. One of the cool things that my sister did, did though is every weekend after our long run, she would give me a present. And it would <laughs> okay. be running shorts or socks or a hat or That's a, some motivation, a cute top. Right? Yeah, yeah, like something. So I got to the point where I'd be like, all right, I gotta do this long run because I get a present. Um, and that kind of instilled in me this love of running gear. Yep. And you know, owning a running store, I get to be around running gear all right, the time. Right. So I don't have to wait for the weekend long run. I get to handle uh, and get cool be around cool yeah. here all the time you have a great sister but yeah i like, do i, I do mean, i, I don't awesome. know if my sibling would do all that for me i hope so so um how do you take that experience and infuse it into your store and your mission because i know you're out there doing a lot of great stuff yeah i 
I didn't get into retail and business owning because I wanted to be a retail store owner. Mm -hmm. I wanted to use it as a platform for doing good in right. the world um, and helping change people's lives. And you know, I'll, I'll say as a meteorologist, one of the ways that raindrops are formed is that little droplets of uh, dust are floated in the air and water droplets glom onto that okay. piece of dust and when it gets heavy, it falls to the earth. And I feel like there's a lot of good people out in the world and they're all just floating out there. They need that nucleus right. to kind of latch onto. So um, that's kind of where I see my role um, is that the store is a great place for people to kind of join us and together we, we can do some great things. Um, the first thing it started with yep. was um, early when I took over the store, there was the big earthquake in Haiti right. and they, there was a call for shoes. And okay. I was like, all right, well, we'll collect some shoes. And so I remembered, I was like, all right, my goal is 200 shoes. We'll ship them to Haiti. And so I started sending the message out to all of our customers in the community. And after the first three days, I had 500 shoes. And these were people who had shoes maybe that they weren't using? Yeah, right? they were just okay. like old sneakers or boots or yep. sandals or whatever. And I was like, whoa, 500. And then the shoes just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. And in the end, we had over 20,000 pairs 20, of shoes. 20,000 pairs yeah, of shoes. Yeah, I was like, what the heck? And then it was amazing what the community did. I needed to get those shoes down to Nashville yep. to get on a Souls for Souls um, shipping container that they would be shipped to Haiti that way. Um, it was going to cost me a gazillion dollars to ship 20,000 pairs of shoes. Um, so WTIC FM, uh, mm -hmm. Christine Lee, heard about our story and she was running with us at the time and they did a fundraiser and they donated from their We Are the Children Christmas Fund Wonderful. the money to rent a U-Haul truck yep. and then plane tickets back for my staff that drove the truck to fly home. Wow. And then the big task was we had to match up all the shoes because I wasn't thinking about tying shoes together. Sure. And sure, I was like, yeah. oh my God, we have to match 20,000 pairs of shoes. So I asked for volunteers. We had over 100 volunteers show up one Saturday morning and we just made a whole shoe brigade line wow. and matched all the shoes and put them in the truck and um, local bakery brought a cake over and fed everybody and I was just like, you know what, this community, there's so many people that want yeah. to do good, they yeah. just need someone to do the good with. You're and creating so, the cloud, but yeah. in this case, it's a, you know, it's a it's silver a lining, cloud. it's exactly. a good cloud. Yeah. Exactly. So what about, I see that you have some information about boots for the homeless. Yeah. Talk about so that as well. One of our yeah. latest initiatives is we call it Footwear with Care. Okay. And it started with, there was a police officer in Hartford named Officer Jimmy Barrett. And he, on his beat, ran into a, a homeless veteran that had gotten a job, mm -hmm. um, but he needed good boots to work the job and he didn't have shoes and he was afraid maybe he wouldn't even be able to take the job because he didn't have boots. So Officer Jimmy asked a friend named Abby, Bo Abby Moore if she had any access to shoes um, and she came to me and said, hey, okay. do you have some shoes? And one of the great things about Fleet Feet is that we let you come and buy a pair of shoes and you get 60 days to try that shoe out. If you don't like the shoe, you return it and we let you try another shoe. Okay. I can't sell those shoes. So what we do is we put those in our donated shoe pile. And anytime I hear about a need for somebody to have shoes, we've got shoes. And we uh, donate those shoes out to local high school kids, yeah. um, inner city kids that are on running teams that don't have access to shoes or good running sneakers. Um, so I gave Abby, I think, like 50 pairs. And I was like, yeah, you know, like, here, here, take, t take some shoes. Sure. And I was thinking, oh, that'll last her, like, the whole winter. And she came back two days later and was like, the shoes are all gone. We've given them out to wow. people. Do you have any more? Right. And so it kind of created this idea that we should do something bigger. And mm -hmm. so we call it Footwear with Care. And it's a partnership with um, the Hartford Police, uh, the Connecticut Podiatric uh, Medical Association, okay. um, Community Partners in Action Downtown, and then Fleet Feet. And what we do is twice a year we hold an event called Stuff a Cruiser. Yeah. And the Hartford Police Cruisers, Officer Jimmy comes up and we collect boots and <coughs> shoes. And then in the wintertime in December, we host a footwear uh, care clinic in uh, City Hall downtown. Yep. And local podiatrists come and they will wash and clean and make sure treat um, the homeless feet to make sure if there's any medical issues they're taken care of. We give them a new pair of socks that are donated by Bomba Socks. Great. And then we give them a pair of shoes. And they must feel fantastic yeah, walking around they with have, socks and shoes exactly. that fit. And, yeah. and especially in the winter, we you know discovered that we don't want to give them just sneakers. We want to give okay. them waterproof shoes or heavy-duty right. boots because they are So these are, are the type outside. of shoes or boots that they'll, that yeah. they'll get. Yeah. So our clinic, uh, footwear clinic this year is December 9th. Okay. Um, November, we'll have another big stuff a cruiser event at Fleet Feet. And then we do this in the spring too, but we yep. give them sneakers. 
um, for the year. And in one year time, we helped over 1,700 homeless people in wow. Hartford, which is pretty darn amazing. That is amazing. So yeah. thank you so much for your work on that. Is there any information that you can read off? And we'll put it on the screen as well. So for people who are listening to this or watching it. Sure. Yeah. We are collecting boots uh, for the homeless. Um, we do ask that the boots be in really good condition. Okay. We don't want the soles to be falling off. Yep. They need to have good shoelaces on them. Um, not frayed. If they're waterproof, even better. Um, if you don't have boots, though, one of the great things about Fleet Feet is I've got um, accounts with a lot of uh, vendors, okay. including Wolverine, which makes a really great waterproof steel-toed boot. And I'm able to buy those for $35 from Wolverine. And so a $35 donation buys a pair of boots for a, an adult. $25 will buy a pair of okay. boots for kids. And if people want to do that or they want to get involved in other ways, who should they contact? Yeah, they can contact uh, Fleet Feet Sports. Okay. Um, and if you go on to our website, we will have a link for Footwear with Care, and that'll take you to a page where you can donate online, or you can come to our Stuff a Cruiser event in November. Wow. I mean, really inspirational, and I think it's, it is amazing that you've, you've turned uh, a personal challenge into uh, something that's, that's helping uh, thousands of people yeah. every year. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Like, yeah. I always get to say, like, I don't work. I get to like have fun and, and help people in this world. And I appreciate everybody that shops at Fleet Feet because it does allow us to support our community. Shopping local is, is such an important thing. Um, and I don't think as many people realize how, how awesome of an impact shopping local can make. Yeah. Um, yeah, buying online is easy, but hey, when you come into a store, you get to walk out with your merchandise and you help employ people and you help our communities become better. Perfect. Stephanie, thank you so much hey, for coming welcome. in. You're welcome. I nice appreciate it. It's nice to meet it. you and nice to, uh, to hear about all the great work that I'll you're doing. I'll see you doing. soon for new shoes. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break and we will be uh, right back. Welcome back, and that is going to do it for this edition of Derek and the District. I want to thank uh, first Stephanie Blosey with Fleet Feet uh, for coming in and uh, talking about all the really important philanthropic uh, efforts that uh, she's doing um, connected with Fleet Feet and, and helping to get uh, homeless and homeless veterans uh, uh, comfortable and safe shoes that they can wear and also helping the disadvantaged children. And if you want to learn more information, of course, you can go down to the store uh, in West Hartford Center or you can look them up online as well. Um, I also want to thank uh, Judy Allen with Save Our Water. Uh, she came in to talk about um, really the pressing issues about water conservation, transparency, good government at the MDC. We talked about the creation of the Consumer Advocate, which is a great legislative accomplishment from this past session, but of course there's uh, more work to do. And if you want more information, uh, you can go to Save Our Water CT. Dot org. And if you do want to contact me about any concern or question that you have, or if you have a good idea uh, for a segment for uh, the next edition of Derek in the District, you can reach out. Um, give me a call at 860-240-8500. My email is Derek, D-E-R-E-K dot slap, S-L-A-P, at C-G-A dot C-T dot gov. Uh, so please uh, reach out and contact me, uh, any issue at all, and I promise I'll get right back to you. Um, so until then, uh, until the next uh, month's edition, um, you know, I hope you have a, a great month. And again, my name is Derek Slap, and I'm at your service.